After years of keeping her personal life and the chaos within it under wraps, a popular Twitch streamer and OnlyFans creator Amaranth was revealed, had revealed over the weekend that not only is she married, her partner is incredibly abusive, psychologically abusive, and has been manipulating her and forcing her to continue streaming even when she doesn't want to. Now, the disgusting responses to her incredibly vulnerable moment is also worth discussing. And we're gonna get to that in just a moment. But before we do, let me give you the context and share with you what she has disclosed with the public. Amaranth, whose real name is Caitlin Siragusa, regularly streams on Twitch, either playing video games or sitting in front of the camera and chatting with her audience of 5.9 million followers. She's also one of the top creators on OnlyFans. And in July, she revealed that she makes as much as $1.5 million per month from the site. So she's doing really well. And part of the reason why she does really well is because people, you know, pay for her content, you know, donate to her Twitch stream. You guys get the point. Now, during her stream this past weekend on Saturday, She divulged that she was not only married, but she also alleged that her husband has threatened to kill her dogs and live streamed a phone conversation she had with him to prove just how abusive he is. I should give you guys a warning for you know anyone who has a difficult time with this type of content. You know, it could be triggering to people who have been victimized in a similar way. I just want to tell you that this is not an easy, uh, you know, story to to share. So I can only imagine how difficult it might be for you. So I want to give you that warning uh, before continuing. With that said, uh, here is the phone conversation that she streamed. Why did you say you were going to kill my dogs? Leave the house. Okay, I can leave the. I, you know what? Actually, I don't. I shouldn't leave the house because my dogs are here. We'll take the dogs and leave. You're asking the question. I'm telling you, and you're interrupting my. Uh, like telling you, literally, literally. What are you saying? You just told me you were gonna kill dogs if I didn't do a 24-hour stream. Nope, did not say that. Now you're just being a liar. I'm not. I just said it. I said I'm going to tell you what I said. In terms of the earlier, are you saying you did not say that? I tried to tell you what I heard from you. And you said you called me a liar. Then you tell me what did you say? I don't even understand what you're saying to me. I know. That's my point. My point is are you listening or not? If you're not, then get Uh, The gaslighting in that phone conversation is just, it's mind blowing. Obviously, uh, psychological abuse in in threatening to harm her dogs. I can't even imagine uh, dealing with that. Uh, He also has complete control, according to her, uh, of their finances, uh, complete control of her accounts. That's another way of keeping people trapped. It's another way of manipulating individuals. Uh, What I found pretty interesting about this was that he did not want her to disclose the fact that she's married. He wanted her to keep it a secret because he wanted her to continue making the money that she makes on Twitch. He would force her to stream for hours and hours on end. He had tried to force her to do a 24 hour stream against her will. And for those of you who who haven't experienced um, this kind of psychological abuse, it's just really important to understand like the amount of control he had over her, her finances, all of that. Um, and, and we have more evidence that she shared uh, with her viewers in just a moment. But I also find it fascinating and damning. Uh, it's a commentary about our society that a woman has to provide such clear evidence of the abuse she's dealing with for individuals to take it seriously. And even after doing so, She's still met with incredibly disgusting arguments and discourse about her personal life while she's in this vulnerable moment and clearly is is seeking help. Uh, so Jenk, I wanted you to jump in. Yeah, um, so that was a little bit triggering, not for anything that's happened at, at, at home for me. I'm lucky in that count, but 
But I've seen a lot of people talk like that, and that's that's exactly how gaslighters talk. So I don't know the specifics. So the, the threatening the dogs was not on that particular portion of the tape. So I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the way that he spoke in that loud voice then, when he was like, "You tell me what did you say?" Right? It's it's gaslighting 101, and and he says, "Are you listening?" They always try to browbeat you with. I'm obviously right, you're obviously wrong, so I'm going to lecture you, okay? It, it, it creates like, look, in some ways it's, it's an emotional torture, right? Psychological torture. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I'm not holding anybody that up to in, in a court of law. I'm not saying, okay, he's gotta go to jail because of the way that he talked to her or anything. No, I'm not saying that. But does it deeply depress and harm the people that are at the receiving end of that, definitely, definitely. And so, I don't know, man, just hearing it, I, I just couldn't, it was, it bothered me massively. Uh, so, please, if you're in one of those relationships, uh, in any uh, shape or form, get out, get out while you still can. I wanna go to the next video where she uh, discusses just you know, obviously she makes a lot of money. Uh, that's self-reported, 1.5 million a month. But he has control of all of her financial accounts, and that's another form of you know keeping her trapped and manipulating her. So let's take a look at the next clip. The therapist even told him that it's a form of like psychological abuse, and that I'm basically living in a fancy prison. And then he was changed for a bit. And then the hot tub meta arose, and he was like, "Oh, this is an opportunity." And then he turned into an ass again. When I agreed to commit to the grind because it was a good financial opportunity for us. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you with one million, and I'm gonna take the rest because I worked harder than you. It's like, and if you don't agree, then I'm gonna burn it all in court. I'm gonna put it all in crypto. Just always threats, always threats. All the accounts are like two factored under his number, and all the. He has all the, like the login information of things, you know. It's like the keeps you there with the fear and the threats. And you fear that he's gonna do something to your animals, and then he's nice again and says that everything's gonna be okay. So I want to emphasize something she said because uh, this is how he controls all the accounts. He set up the accounts to where there's a two-factor authentication, and if you try to change the password. Well, he would be notified, right? Like he has complete and utter control of all of those accounts. And so that kind of manipulation, that kind of control, again, it's all about keeping her trapped. And look, I don't think I'm going too far in saying it. So I'm just gonna say it. This is what, for lack of a better word, Johns or, or pimps do, right? Where they make money off of exploiting women and they they're abusive toward the women that they're exploiting to make money off of i mean how is this really any different and and what is particularly gross about the way we still in this incredibly puritanical society think about um the way we think about women the way we think about women who do things like you know have accounts or whatever on only fans it's almost as if like they're considered throwaways. Like, well, you you've objectified yourself this way. So why are you surprised that you would be treated poorly? And no, we need to progress as a society to the point where we value people regardless of what they do for a living. And yes, uh, sex work is work. People deserve protection. And I just feel like she's been, God, she's been abused in so many ways by this person that she's been married to. And the fact that he wanted her to hide the fact that they were married just so he could continue exploiting her to make money off of her is just unbelievable and gross. And what's also unbelievable and gross is the way that some people reacted to her. So she also shares some text messages of you know the abusive things that he has sent to her. We don't have enough time to get into all of those details, but she provided a lot of evidence. I actually wanna move on to um, some of the gross reaction uh, that she has received. A lot of streamers came out defending her, supporting her, showing her love. And that makes me feel really good to know that there are good people out there who are you know, trying to provide the support that she needs right now. 
Then there are other idiots uh, like this guy, Keemstar, uh, who tweeted this. It's since been deleted, but he wrote this. Clearly husband is abusing, she showed the text. Just kind of going back to how far women have to go to provide the evidence before anyone takes their accusation seriously. Then he continues with the, but Amaranth herself has scammed so many guys online claiming she was single for years. These Twitch streamers don't care about their viewers. By the way, he's a Twitch streamer. They all just use you and your low IQs to fill their pockets. Okay, just as a woman, I'm gonna state this and this is a message to everyone online in regard to content creators, but especially female content creators. We owe you nothing. You're not entitled to any part of our lives, okay? If you pay for extra exclusive content, whatever, that doesn't mean you own us. That doesn't mean we're gonna ever sleep with you. It doesn't mean we're gonna even respond to your messages. You are not entitled to us. Okay, it's, I mean, I have experienced it firsthand with like, especially dudes feeling super entitled to like your time, to your responses, to their messages, and all of that. I can't imagine how difficult it is for Amaranth and especially women who, you know, make some money through sex work, right? You're not entitled to anything other than the clear content that you are paying for. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So, just quick advice, Amrath. Lawyer up instantly. Two factor authorization works both ways. So, you can't access your money, but neither can he. You get a lawyer instantly. Make sure that he cannot touch that money because he'll take it all. Don't, don't be nuts, okay? So, make sure that he cannot take the money and then you got to go to court. There's no way around it, okay? What's the sign? Oh, I'll give you a million, I'll keep the rest. Yeah, no, no deal, no deal, okay? Uh, I did all the hard work, did you? Did you? Because it doesn't look like it. Uh, and if you made a one and a half million a month, make sure you protect that money, keep it real. And then the guys who judge, right, are almost always the guys who partake, right? So they'll watch the pictures or the videos and they'll love it, and then they'll turn around and judge the uh, woman. It's that kind of hypocrisy drives me nuts. I cannot stand it. It's nails on a chalkboard. And then finally, to Anna's point on the sense of entitlement, there's tons of guys who are like super mad at her for lying about being single. Why were you going to date her? Like if she was single, like you were this close to getting her? Did you really think that? I just I am stunned by that. I can't I can't believe that. So, like, do most do a lot of guys think not most? There's no way it's most. Do a lot of guys think that way? Like, oh, I saw a hot girl, and whether it's in adult movies or or a celebrity, and think like, oh yeah, I'm this close. Oh, she lied. Oh, she's married. Otherwise, I was I was about to get her. No, you weren't. Are you insane? No, I know, I know. It is insane. But no, you would be shocked, Jank. I. I I'm sure that guys experience it, like male content creators experience it to some extent, but it's on a different level with women. And the rage that I like, so I'm just talking from personal experience. I've had so many people get so angry with me because I don't respond to their messages. I, I'm flooded with messages all day long, all day long. I can't even keep up with like work related emails I'm supposed to respond to day of. So like, I no one is entitled to my time, unless you're paying me and I work for you, right? In that case, there's you know a transactional relationship there. In the case of the show we do, you know, if if you're a fan and I've communicated with you before and I'm supported, like I'm grateful for your support, great. But you're not entitled to constantly interacting with me especially during my off time, which I desperately need. Like women have to protect themselves, especially when they're in the spotlight, especially when they're content creators and public figures. We don't owe you anything other than the content that you are paying for, period. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.